But we're the Haney family. This is my wife Jessica, our little girl Claire, our boy Keith, and I'm Orville Haney. And uh, these kids represent the seventh generation of dairy farmers on our farm. We milk cattle here in, uh, on the Kosciuszko Fulton County line, just north of Akron, Indiana. And what you're seeing behind us is our herd to pasture. Well, what we're going to do now is uh, mix a little feed for the cows. And this is our vertical tub mixer wagon. And uh, it's just a bale of alfalfa hay that we're going to start with. We're going to drop that in the wagon. And uh, there's knives inside there. They're going to chop this up and uh, get it ready for the cattle. We're going to put in a little bit of straw now and uh, this this uh, inside the cow, inside the rumen, this is going to act as a really nice floor uh, to, for a mat uh, to just keep them healthy and uh, with the animals on pasture, the wet grass is just a little bit too much moisture so we give them some dry feed stuff with their grain to slow down their guts a little bit, make them more comfortable and the grain doesn't go through them as fast, we get better use of the grain. This is a supplement mixture. Uh, what we have in here, this is one third ground corn and two thirds mineral and salt. And it's got some uh, buffering agents similar to roll aids to make sure they don't get a stomach ache but it, it uh, makes sure that they get all their vitamins and minerals. And then this is just ground up whole kernel corn. This is the majority of their feed. Each cow will get 12 pounds of this per day and they'll get three pounds of the mineral supplement per day along with five pounds of the hay and straw mixture. Oh, this, this mixer wagon is essentially like your, your mixer in your kitchen. Uh, we put the feed stuffs in and it's going to spin and, and cut them up and get a nice consistent base here uh, of hay, straw, and corn. And then that way, every time an animal takes a bite of feed, she's getting everything that she needs in that bite. And uh, you get, get what she needs to her uh, more consistently. After they get done milking, they'll come down here to the lot and get some water and socialize. And then when everybody's done milking, so they all get a fair shot, we come across with their, their corn and their, and their dry feed before they go to pasture. And uh, my brother now, he's, he's going to run across this feed alley and, and give them their feed. All right, what, what you're seeing here is, is the, the front side of the cattle uh, during the milking process. As you can see, these animals, uh, they enjoy being milked. They're not under stress. They stand here and, and uh, chew their cud. And uh, just it's, it's somewhat of a euphoric experience for the animal to give her milk. This is what she's here to do, and, and she likes doing it. And uh, they uh, stand here in line and, and uh, real comfortable. You can see the name tags on these animals. Uh, each, each animal has its own name. And the yellow tagged animals have pedigrees that they're actually registered animals, much like your registered dogs. Uh, they have pedigrees and papers and uh, family trees, so to speak. And then these orange tagged animals, they, uh, they don't have pedigrees. They're what you call a, a grade animal. But the, the yellow tagged animals would be what we'd use for our uh, 
breeding stock as we sell our breeder bulls and our heifers to, to other farmers. They're our, they're our best animals. And this red animal right here, she's, she's my favorite cow. Her name's Flame, and uh, she's, she's the best cow on the farm. We've got her cleaned up and, and uh, ready to go here. It's an automatic takeoff. Uh, we'll get, get the vacuum started. That'll get the milker going so we're ready to milk and we slap it on there. And uh, now, it's, now it's up to the cow. This particular system has a uh, dual pulsation so we milk the back of the udder separate of the front of the udder as far as how it milks and uh, the back two quarters have more milk in them so uh, this system set up to milk the back of the udder just a little bit faster than the front so when the animal's done milking the milker comes off and she doesn't have to sit there being milked in the front when she's dry in the front while we're trying to clean up the back so it gets all the milk at once it's more comfortable for the animal and and uh, we've gotten, we've had good success with that technology. Well, what you're seeing now, uh, they get towards the end of their milking. Uh, my brother's applying a little bit of pressure to the milker, make sure that we get get all that milk out of the animal, so she doesn't have stale milk uh, left inside her udder that that uh, can cause problems for the animal. And then when there's no more milk coming through here, uh, we'll just uh, press a button and let the milker come off automatically. We do have the option with this technology to uh, make it automatic so it'll take it off on its own. However, since we're here and watching it, we prefer to take it off ourselves just to make sure that uh, each animal gets milked uh, properly and we don't let them out with full of milk uh, so they're uncomfortable during the day. As the animal's finished milk and the milkers are off the animal, um, we're going to use a solution that is soap and iodine and what it does is creates a barrier. Um, the end of the teat doesn't close immediately after milking. It's open for a few minutes. That creates a sterile barrier just like you're prepping for surgery to make sure that no pathogens, uh, no sickness gets up in that teat and causes problem for the animal after we let her back out uh, with the herd. After each string of cattle that come in, we wash the floor and uh, make it clean for the next group so that we make sure things are as, as clean as possible to, to make our product so we keep our product wholesome. We do our best to, to take good care of this land. Uh, it's been in the family now. Uh, the seventh generation is coming in and we want to make sure it's in good shape for generations to come. We care about our neighbors, we care about our community, and we do not want to put a black eye on our reputation by uh, causing problems with poor management practices. Uh, the nutrients in as far as the feed and the manure and, and the chemicals that we use here on the farm, they're expensive, so we want them to stay on the farm and for their use we don't want them going downstream and causing problems for other people and uh, if we don't take care of, of our environment here the cattle won't have the lush green grass that, that they're enjoying now because uh, the two go hand in hand the animal care and the care of the environment have a direct impact on our ability to make a living here off this farm and if we don't take care of both then the farm's not going to take care of us